Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is Jasur with uh, another episode, but this time I am uh, in Bali, <laughs> in Indonesia. Yeah, I know, uh, unannounced, I just came here uh, just to see my friend actually. And probably I will be staying here for a couple of months uh, because, you know, we have some plans here um, uh, in business and also in travel. So we're going to do a lot of vlogging in Bali and uh, shoot some videos, uh, create some content. <coughs> and then afterwards, uh, probably after a couple of months, I will be back to Philippines and then continue uh, discovering and, uh, you know, traveling around the Philippines. So that's the plan for now. Now, uh, purpose of this video is actually I want to introduce my friend uh, to you guys because I've recently interviewed him uh, about his views and perspective uh, on living in Indonesia uh, because he lives in Surabaya, all right, and uh, he does business, he owns a company uh, and he's originally from Ireland. Uh, he's actually a son of you know immigrants from India uh, his parents are from India but they immigrated to Ireland he's an Irish citizen uh, also lives in UK and Ireland but full-time nowadays he lives in uh, Indonesia so I ask different uh, questions to him uh, about his uh, you know uh, perspective why he chose Indonesia for business and why he decided to settle here for the time being so uh, yeah enjoy the interview but before <laughs> we start the interview i want to show you a little bit where are we staying here as you can see it's a guest house in bali uh, it's uh, in the changu area actually the price for this guest house is approximately 270 dollars per uh, per month actually so let me show you around a little bit um, on this side, on the right hand side, there are so many rooms here, uh, probably approximately 20 or um, a little bit more than 20 rooms, single rooms with a, you know, a double bed, like a king size bed. And um, let's go to the entrance, you will see. This is one of the reasons why actually we uh, decided to make a comparison between, you know, different countries and talk about settling uh, in different, you know, Southeast Asian uh, countries. So, let me turn the camera around. As you can see here, uh, this is the door entrance. There is another uh, entrance where the reception is. And on the left hand side, once you enter the guest house, you see this beautiful pool. As you can see, it's always clean, <laughs> fresh water. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, there are so, some foreigners also living. Uh, I've seen a couple of guys from Germany, from uh, Europe, like the Netherlands, etc. So without further ado, uh, let's start the interview. Uh, enjoy. If you have more questions to Rishi or myself, uh, you're welcome to ask about traveling uh, or settling in. Uh, I know that I don't have much information about Philippines. Uh, you know, you can judge from the previous videos, but I've, uh, I've been to Bali before. I went around and I'm, you know, more or less I'm informed about living in Bali as, a, as an expat, okay? What do you need? What are the prices? Uh, what are the approximate, you know, budgets you have to like plan before coming here? So, uh, Rishi is going to answer a few questions based on his uh, perception, based on his, you know, uh, kind of uh, thoughts. So based on his like specific circumstance, because like I said, he runs a business. Okay, just like myself, he's a corporate consultant, but more towards financial consultancy. Uh, myself, uh, my company is actually a legal consultancy. I run uh, two companies nowadays from the uh, in the U.S. Uh, and also we have a company uh, in China in Shanghai. So I run them from distance nowadays Anyway guys, <laughs> let's start the interview any questions leave in the comment section below I will be more than happy to do a follow-up interview with Rishi. Okay. Cheers Hi Rishi Hello, just how well, are you good? Uh, welcome to the channel and thanks for Thank agreeing you so much for the interview 
All right, so let's start uh, from the beginning. Uh, can you tell us first, uh, why did you leave China in the beginning? <laughs> so I left China during the pandemic, left in about October 2020, my brother was getting married. Okay. So I left, my plan was to initially come back after the, my brother's wedding and I had some business to do here in Indonesia. So the plan was to grow and expand the business from China into Southeast Asia, Singapore, okay. Malaysia, Indonesia. Thanks to COVID, I suppose that, you know, my plans were pre-poned rather than postponed a little bit. So borders in China were quite difficult to get into, I suppose. Yeah. It wasn't that easy to enter China. Plus I wanted to expand the Indonesian. Why, base. why Indonesia specifically? Why not Taiwan? Why not like uh, Singapore? You know or Hong Kong even so Hong Kong and Taiwan are part of China as uh, let's not go into the sensitivity of the topic here but uh, in wanted, terms of work and business in terms of work and business yeah. I want to expand in different Southeast Asian re regions definitely Singapore is on my list and so is Malaysia but one country at a time you know okay before we go any further about the yeah. business can you briefly tell what kind of business you do so audience understands sure so I'm a business designer and a consultant my company is called Uniwesco got an office in India, I've got an office in the UK, I've got an office here in Jakarta, Indonesia, and an office in Shanghai, China. So as a business designer, I work with startups and other companies, small to medium enterprises, even certain uh, large corporations, where I basically incorporate their company structure globally, but also help them to uh, get source funding if they're growing, growing their business, design their business for them in terms of marketing, their strategic plans, strategic consulting, help them to expand into right. different regions okay. and then invest for that business, invest personally as well and also as a business. So for example, I do financial and portfolio management, business advisory, business consulting in that regard. Okay. So all right, going back to the earlier question now, <laughs> let's continue. Why Indonesia specifically over other countries? So Indonesia is the fourth largest economy in terms of purchasing power. And good that you mentioned this topic. A lot of people ask me, I basically live in the UK full time these days since October 2021 last year. A lot of people say, why would you leave UK and Ireland like Europe? Yeah. Why not go to Germany or France or whatever European countries? Yeah. Why come to Asia? And I'm like, because Asian Asian people in general or other like, um, you know, let's say uh, less developed countries, people. Yeah. They try to go to the West, exactly. including EU, UK, Canada. For why sure. you chose so one privilege that I have, just sir, is that I have an Irish passport. Okay. So with a global passport, sixth strongest passport in the world, I'm not bragging here, I can travel freely anywhere. I've got a Kitas here in Indonesia. I've got an Indonesian company. What is Kitas? Can you explain? Kitas, okay, Kitas is basically a work visa. It allow, it's a two-year work visa. So once you have your own company here in Indonesia, you can sponsor yourself on that company and legally work in Indonesia, do whatever you want to do, and basically generate income using that company while living in Indonesia. Got a Kitas here, two years unlimited uh, multiple entry visa. Okay. Yes, UK is a great place to live. Yeah. Yes, I drive a five series in the UK. I'm here like, you know, renting uh, cars or motorbikes or grabs and you know, grab is basically equivalent of DD in China or Uber in the US or UK. But you know, Asia has a lot of, especially Indonesia, a lot of business opportunities. I was talking to my auntie a few days ago and she said, Indonesia is in Asia. Are there that many opportunities that you have left UK? That's the mindset, just sir. A lot of people have this mindset just because, you know, it's the UK. Yes, London has amazing opportunities. London is the one city, the city to live in. But when it comes to business and globally, like as a digital nomad like yourself, when you want to expand and grow your business, grow yourself as a person, you want to be able to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Unfortunately, London doesn't cut it. London generates a lot of income for me as a business. Yes, I love London. I love to live in London. Amazing. A place where I would want to uh, start a family, raise a family, send my kids to school. But as a single person currently growing the business with full of energy, I want to be able to expand into different regions. And Indonesia is a great place for that. Okay. That you mentioned, you know, why Indonesia, why Asia? You know, Tesla, everybody knows Tesla. Tesla's plan is to go to India. Right. Okay. And so Tesla, as you know yourself, when we were in China, it opened up a gigafactory very close to one of the economic centers that we used to work in, yeah. in Songjiang area. And that generates, uh, Tesla invested up 5 billion USD mm. that time. Now, 
Tesla wanted to expand into India, which is a major, major automotive market. Me and Alex were talking casually last night about automotive market in India. It's probably one of the largest automotive markets in the world, if not, it'll be the largest very soon because Indians have middle class have money, they want to be able to spend. And as the middle class in any particular country grows, they want to be able to spend the money as soon as possible. India didn't allow Tesla to enter the Indian market because India wants to protect its domestic car automotive market. So we have Tata's, Mahindra's, all the locals and all the scooter companies as well, the TVS, Bajaj, so on and so forth. Tesla's coming to Indonesia. So there is something in Indonesia, even a major corporation mm. like Tesla, Elon Musk, yeah. which you like as a visionary, as a business leader. Yeah. If he's planning to enter, there must be something in the country, in Indonesia. And then there's so many opportunities in Indonesia, not just necessarily in Jakarta, but also in Bali. We're in Bali. Bali is amazing for the serenity, for the peace, for the beaches, for everything. But people forget Jakarta is a bustling financial capital. My office is in Jakarta. I'm a suit and boot guy. I prefer to work in Jakarta in a high rise building. Everything that I used to get in China. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, China is amazing to do business in for import-export, for e-commerce, for dropshipping, so on and so forth. Yeah. But then when you want to grow the business, you cannot just be stuck in one zone. Okay. So for you, main reason uh, to be based in Jakarta is to expand your business yes. in this market, right? Yes. Okay. Is it because of, uh, okay, let's compare, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just to give perspective. Uh, for example, there is, in Asia, Southeast Asia, there are more other regions. Yes. Right? Uh, for example, let's say Thailand, mm -hmm. or let's pick uh, Singapore, for yes. example, or even Philippines. Yes. Uh, can you name a few advantages of Indonesia over these regions? Sure. Singapore is a little bit expensive. If you are a medium-sized enterprise that's generating roughly about $500,000 a year in revenue, definitely have a base in Singapore. I will be soon uh, incorporating a Singaporean company for the Singaporean client base at the moment i'm generating all that revenue through the uk company got a singapore bank account but i want to be able to start up an office in singapore soon thailand is a great place to chill to again for personal circumstances thailand doesn't suit me thailand is a great place for a lot of people who want to retire and you know let's say if you were to retire with two million pounds in the uk your two million pounds will go a long way in thailand versus the uk you'll have your lamborghini your ferrari your Porsche, whatever, but you'll also have a great lifestyle. Live like a king in Thailand. Singapore is a great financial capital if your business is related to those topics, mm. those particular uh, uh, areas, those particular centers. But if your business is into drop shipping, e-commerce, or if you're a digital nomad and you're doing a lot of digital business, it makes no sense to live in Singapore where the cost of living is equivalent to London, New York, and Tokyo. Makes no sense okay. as a person. And then Singapore is a, it's a city. It doesn't have a beach. People love beaches. They want to be able to go get a tan. Singapore won't give you that. Philippines, security concerns. Manila, there's certain areas of Manila, brilliant, posh neighborhoods, but certain areas of Manila, mm. Philippines, I wouldn't want to be there at nighttime. Like living in Shanghai, it kind of spoils you in a certain way that the security in China is so great, mm -hmm. you can walk out at midnight and exactly. have no fear whatsoever. Whereas Philippines, you'll have that fear. I was in Karachi for six months in Pakistan. Again, right. a great place to live, but there's certain nitty gritty details. You know, when you get older and the business grows, you won't have maintain a certain level of lifestyle. Yeah. Singapore will allow that. Manila, Philippines won't, yeah. personally from myself. And you said, why Indonesia? Security is pretty good in uh, Bali. Lifestyle is pretty good. Food options being a vegetarian, so many vegan options, so many vegetarian options. Plus the lifestyle, fitness point of view, I can maintain myself here. Mm -hmm. Growing the business, there's just so many opportunities in attracting clients mm. who do amazing businesses here in Indonesia and Bali and, Philipp uh, and also in Jakarta, Surabaya, where I predominantly live most of the time that just to get those clients and you know okay. cater for those clients let's talk about some specific now uh, specifics um, okay you say you're saying that Indonesia is a great place to attract you know clients and mm. expand the business now if somebody wants to establish a company here and also 
be able to leave long term mm. so can you give uh, us some you know information on that like how sure. to establish a company and plus sponsor yourself is there any investment requirements there are no investment requirements you open up a company what in kind of addition. company is it ltd it's fully an ltd for, it's, fully a, it's foreign a fully owned. foreign owned ltd company okay you will have to have a commissionary a secretary which will be a local a resident a resident local okay so but there's uh my company provides that nominee director service. Same in Singapore. If you want to open a company, you'll have to have a nominee director, a resident director. Yeah. So we provide that service. Investment? No, you don't need any investment. Okay. However, you get a two-year key test, which is renewable every two years. So in China, it used to be one year, yeah. year annually. It's two years here. Pretty straightforward procedure. Incorporating the company takes no more than a month, at three weeks usually. Okay. Bank account, uh, roughly about 10 to 15 working days. Again, two to three weeks. Okay. And then that's pretty much, it's pretty straightforward. The cost we can get into the specifics because everybody has their own personal circumstances and some people want to sponsor their family as well. So everybody has their own spa particular criteria. It's a pretty straightforward procedure. Once mm -hmm. your company is incorporated, once your bank account is run, up and running, you can use that company to generate revenue on a global level. Yeah. And then you only pay for the taxes generated in Indonesia, for income generated and derived in Indonesia. So Indonesia doesn't tax global income? No. Let's say your Indonesian company is making or, you know, uh, having income yeah. from outside of Indonesia. No, as long as it's inco income derived within Indonesia, you pay Indonesian taxes. Okay. If it's income derived outside of Indonesia, you don't pay All right. taxes. But uh, I work with accountants and lawyers, experts in this particular field in Jakarta, who will be able to assist with the whole procedure of maximizing your potential revenue basically by minimizing your right. taxes in a particular okay, manner. Okay, since you mentioned taxes, compared to European or in general Western countries, uh, definitely how's the cheaper, situation? Definitely cheaper than the UK and Ireland. So in Ireland, you know, the Sly government, I shouldn't say this about my government, but Ireland introduced a USC, a universal social charge back in during the recession days, 2009-10. They said that they, it's a two-year tax just to generate enough revenue because we were going through austerity measures during the recession. Yeah. But since then, the tax has never been scrapped. So it's mm. basically a tax upon tax. So in Ireland, we pay VAT, of course. Yeah. But then we also pay income tax. Then we pay uh, PRSI, which is social insurance, like same in China and NI in the UK. And then we also pay USC. So it's a tax plus tax plus tax. So eventually, if you're a good income earner in Ireland, generating roughly 80 to 85,000 euros plus, you're paying about roughly 50% in taxes, which is a sizable chunk, Alex. You don't earn that much money to bloody mm. pay taxes. Yeah. You know, I work with, work with accountants in the UK, in mm. London, and even in London, the average tax, you know, if you're earning 100,000 plus, yeah. is roughly about 40, 45%. You don't want to pay 40% so in of Indonesia, your, you don't have this. Uh, it's not that much. <laughs> okay. It's not that what much. What is the approximate? Thirty percent. Thirty percent. I paid taxes last year. Thirty percent. Okay. Twenty-five to thirty percent. Right. So I'm saving 10, 15 percent. Okay. Plus my money, the value for money is quite good here in Indonesia. Again, mm. I live in London full time. Okay. London is a base. I love living in London. UK is a great place to generate UK income, pay UK taxes, so on and so forth. But any income outside of the UK, why would I generate to the UK company, pay UK taxes when I can generate through Indonesian okay, company? This question I ask to many, um, you know, people I know in Asia, yeah. like including my country, which is Uzbekistan. Yeah. Many people, like I mentioned before, you yeah. know, in the earlier question, many people still tend to, you know, uh, you know, tend to immigrate, or they they want to, they're planning to yeah. immigrate to Canada, for example, or UK, Ireland, definitely. So Portugal as well. Yeah, Portugal as well. Why do you think people still like with families, even yeah. they, you know, from Asia, especially, especially with uh, from a less developed country, why do you think still, you know, try to go to those high tax regions? Because they want to get the passport. Eh? Okay. Better standard of living for yeah. sure. Education wise, of course, Europe is amazing. I work with companies in Portugal. I assist my clients in securing Portuguese citizenship. By investment yeah so we'll talk about that specifics in a different video yeah portugal ireland immigration by investment so we have those sand kits and navies and all those west indy yeah. like you know big, uh, caribbean countries yeah. that you can secure a passport as you know yeah. but a secure european passport in our portugal cyprus 
UK, mm. Ireland. It's a great passport to have, better standard of living, healthcare is amazing, education is amazing. If you've got kids, as you do as well, as they get older, you want to put them in really good schools, you mm. want to put them in good universities. So in that, Indonesia, you don't have that, you mean? Indonesia, you or have in amazing some schools. A- Asian uh, Okay, Indonesia, Jakarta has amazing international schools, yeah. but definitely not universities. You mm. cannot compare British and American okay. universities to an okay. Asian university. Singapore and Hong Kong, yes, for sure, mm. but it's just the mindset. We're playing with the mindset of people here. Personally, for me, having an Indonesian base works for the opportunities available in the Indonesian All and right. the Southeast Asian region. Soon, I'll open the Singapore company and the Malaysian to globally expand the base. Yeah. For me, I can I have the UK company. I can incorporate any company in Europe because I have been a European citizen anytime. So for me, the circumstances work in my favor at the moment. Mm. But for people, as you say, your country nationals, Uzbek, Uzbek people, they want to immigrate for those reasons. And I don't blame them, they should. Yeah. But once the kids are settled, once they have secured those green ticks, passport, better healthcare, better education, so you want to expand the business and yeah. really grow the business. Asia is the place to be. I've been following Indonesia since 2006 when I was 15 years old, 14 years old. I used to watch Bloomberg and Indonesia, they used to show Jakarta, the financial center of Jakarta, Indonesia was growing at 10% double-digit mm. growth back then, when the rest of the world was growing at 2, 3, 4%, especially after pandemic, which major economy is growing at a double-digit growth? Tell me any economy. I don't see of any. Mm. UK, we're in 9.1% inflation. A client of mine last year made 250,000 pounds revenue. Guess how much taxes he paid? 110,000 pounds. <laughs> okay. So not 50 exactly. We yeah. were able to optimize the taxes. But on an income of 250, paying 110 tax, why? Of course, we should pay our taxes, fair share of taxes. Not saying avoid taxes. Sorry, avoid taxes, don't evade taxes. Evasion is illegal, avoidance is legal if you know the ways. But that doesn't mean that you're just gonna like you know, all your hard earned money just in taxes. You know, it's yes, of course, we should pay our taxes for the roads, for the healthcare that we use, and everything. Yeah. But 110,000 pounds, people don't even earn that much money. That's like two average incomes. Okay. That's an average income for two people in the UK. And you're paying that much in taxes. So that's why he's now planning to settle in Dubai. All right. oh, I've incorporated his Dubai co- company, done up his structure. And Dubai, guess what the tax is in Dubai? Zero, A big yeah. fat zero. They introduced 9% uh, tax, which, is, uh, which will be in effect very soon. But, yes. yeah, but still, w- 40% versus 9%. Yeah. So from that point of view, Indonesia is great. And for a lot of digital nomads, when I say these, like, if you're in e-commerce, drop shipping, even blogging, a lot of bloggers, YouTubers, are expanding and settling their bases here in Indonesia, yeah. generating their income, YouTube income, through an Indonesian company, Indonesian structure, paying minuscule taxes versus the US, UK, and living the life here. Can foreigners open, for example, uh, bank accounts in uh, Indonesia? Yes. I have it's one, possible, right? for sure, mm-hmm. of course, how else do you think they'll do their banking, for sure. And guess what, unlike China, you get a Visa or a MasterCard. Okay. It's a global exception. So there is no restriction on foreign currency, I mean no. USD? No, no. So the only restriction can be if you're transferring larger amounts per day mm. in excess of 20,000, then it might be red flagged, you'll have to uh, present the supporting documentation. But that's the size of a chunk. You're not going to be transferring twenty thousand dollars every day unless you yeah. have a major business. Mm. And if you have that kind of a business, then the banks know you have a relationship with the bank. Okay. All right. Would you also recommend Indonesia uh, for people uh, who want to relocate with their families? Yes. Is it secure enough? Very much so. So in Indonesia, one thing. Okay, you mentioned Europe versus Europe. Europe, you won't have a maid unless you're a multimillionaire. You won't have a driver until you're a multi multimillionaire. And also Europe, you have to do a lot of stuff yourself, a lot of household chores yourself. Whereas in Indonesia, the first thing what I did when I relocated to Indonesia back in December 2020, I hired a maid. So I don't do the cooking and cleaning. Mm. I don't do my laundry. I don't do my ironing. And guess what? You can rent a driver on a daily basis. So if you buy a car here, pretty reasonable you just hire a driver you don't want to be stuck in traffic and just like you know while I when I'm in Jakarta I just go rent a car or even 
just you know, yeah, rent a car and get, comes along with the driver. While I'm working in the back seat, the driver's bringing me to places. The traffic is notorious in Jakarta. I don't want to be driving, stuck mm. in traffic. Whereas in Europe, if I'm in London, people of British people will be able to understand here. You don't want to be stuck on the M25. That's the world's largest car park. So mm -hmm. Indonesia as a family, and, and Jakarta's got amazing international schools. Yeah. French, German, British, American schools. It's got really good healthcare, private healthcare. Okay. As long as you're willing to pay for it, you have all the facilities that are possible. Mm -hmm. And like foot massages are what, five to eight, ten dollars? <laughs> All right. Ten dollars roughly? Well, London, a foot massage is roughly about 50 pounds. Mm. So ten dollars versus 50 pounds. In America, I'm not exactly sure of the American rates, but probably mm. won't be ten dollars for sure. So you have a good standard of living. So you have like uh, all the facilities available in Europe and developed countries at a lesser cost. So like Jakarta, like you know, even in Surabaya, there are these certain malls, shopping centers, which are as good, if not better, than the British and the American malls, supermarket, um, sub, uh, shopping centers. So in the UK, we have Trafford Center in Manchester. We've got Lakeside in Grays in um, near Lake in Lakeside Turk. And then there's Westfield in White City in London. Shanghai has got those uh, malls. Uh, Shintendi, there's a mm. big mall, and then I forgot the name of the mall in uh, Jing'an area, the one, yeah. the Shangxi Mall. Shangxi, yeah. Yes, you have got those malls, but China is, again, from a living point of view, education is bloody expensive. Yeah. Unless you're making big money, it's very expensive to send two kids to school. On average, tuition fee is about 150,000 RMBs per child per year. So you've got two kids, that's 200,000 RMBs. That's 35,000 pounds for two kids, yeah. that's a lot of money. Yeah. Whereas Jakarta is not that much, A. Europe is free, because as you become a PR, yeah. you got your PRs, it's free. Yeah. And also, you get your malls, you have your high-end stores, you have your brands in Indonesia, and you've also got the lifestyle of the Asian flair, where it's like cheap labor, Okay. drivers. When we go to Jakarta and Surabaya, I, I would like to invite you, Alex, where I, Surabaya, you get a mansion for roughly eight hundred thousand dollars equivalent, and it's foreigners a can buy. Yes. Okay. It's a Property. ten bedroom, massive mansion with underground parking for ten cars. Okay. With pillars that look like an Italian, basically architect, like a uh, Milan, the Duomo in Milan, for example, the cathedrals or whatever. It's brilliant. So you, the lifestyle that you can get here in Asia, in Indonesia. You won't be able to get that in Europe for that amount of money, for okay. a fraction of the cost, basically. All right. Okay, so I guess this is it. Um, thank you, Rishi. No problem. Uh, for <laughs> yeah, um, you know, giving this interview and answering all these questions. So let me... Okay, guys, thanks for watching. And like I said in the beginning, please leave your questions in the like, comment section below. Uh, and we're going to make a follow-up. Uh, you know, interview later on based on that. Thank you.